Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to continue with the next speaker this afternoon. That will be Janine. Yeah, Janine Bagwandin about new applications for SDGs and what SDGs is, she will tell you. Janine, may I invite you, please? Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I will tell you a little bit about a project that I'm doing with the province uh, and together with the University of Groningen uh, and the Ontwikkelfabriek. And it's um, sustainable cost-benefit analysis. How do... Yes, I will tell you a little bit about the mission first, then about the method, and then about the tool. An introduction, first a little bit about me. Well, my name is Janine. I'm a digital designer and UX researcher and designer. UX stands for user experience. Um, what I like to do in my work is take all kinds of information and structure it, order it. I love to color code things, so therefore this image. Um, I was approached by uh, Simon because in the province they work mission-based and as projects have more complex and more goals and categories to, um, to, to aim for, to, to um, uh, develop or to uh, contribute to, um, it's rather complex to, to, to show where your project uh, contributes to. Um, so for project owners, it's, it's, it's quite a large task to show and um, prove, and even for themselves, understand where, where their project um, actually delivers value. Um, it could be a little bit like being lost in a forest. Um, you can be lost uh, in the information that's available, not knowing where you can find the information. Um, and there's a lack of a goal and method to show where your project actually delivers. Um, for this reason, the province uh, reached out to Frans Seitzma, who's also here from the University of Groningen. Um, and in his research report, he developed a method that consists of three, um, um, well, strategies. Um, you may know for sure one of them, maybe all three. The first one is the sustainable development goals. The second one is the ecosystem services. And the last one is the broad well-being or broad prosperity. Um, there is a the MCCBA stands for multi-criteria cost-benefit analysis. Um, this is a rather large assessment method that requires months and a team of researchers. And uh, Frans, with his research report, uh, developed a method that is uh, a quick scan in which he quantify, made a quantifiable method to uh, assess your project based on these three um, constructs. If you see this slide, you see that that's still a rather large list of goals and sub-goals. So under each of the 17 sustainable development goals, there is a long list of other uh, sub-goals that you, can s you have to walk through to see if your project has any kind of um, relevance to it. So instead of being lost in the forest, there's now a path, but it's quite a challenging one. And for some, it might even be a very, very challenging one. Um, as we want to encourage everyone to get at least involved in doing the assessment, um, I work now together with the Onwekelfabriek and Frans to develop a tool that guides you, um, tells you along the way where to go, you have always have a clear idea where you're at and where, what steps to take next. Um, we will develop a single tool that is 
um, we're focusing on tablet now. They will be available on mobile and uh, computers as well. Um, it is the quick scan in which you have all information available. So all information about the methods, about the goals, about the sub goals, a guide to which steps to take, how does it work. Um, you can create your own account. Um, therefore, you can always pause and resume, have an overview of projects you assessed in the past. You can review re them again in the future. Um, for uh, both yourself and your account and for the research, um, you can fill in details about the project. Um, things as location, uh, when the project uh, was started. Um, these details can be uh, transferred to a project page, which also holds your results. That can also be posted on a website. Um, so aside from having your own personal account and space where you have an overview of your projects, it can also lead to a sense of community because there will be a website that holds all the projects. Uh, and you can see what other projects are relate in, in your area because you fill in the location and um, maybe even find inspiration from other case studies. Um, uh, one unique thing that we use to uh, tackle the long list of goals and sub-goals and categories is a, uh, also an idea that Frans started in his research, is a video-guided uh, assessment where you have a video that displays different types of content, images, that makes it easier to relate your project to these goals. Um, along the video on your screen, you can see the different goals. So for the sustainable development goals, this unfortunately is the uh, ecosystem services, but for the sustainable development goals, you will have 17 sections in the video. And when you recognize something that's related to your project, you can mark it. And when you go to the next screen, then you will find a pre-marked list. So it is focused on the, the, the parts that you see as relevant to your project. Um, and therefore, you don't have to go to the long list, which could hold up to almost 170 sub-goals. Um, this step, we hope, will encourage people to not be overwhelmed by the long list uh, and get, and you can, even you can pause it, so it's a lower barrier to get started with the assessment. Initially, we started um, developing a concept for the mobile. Um, this was a rather concept, uh, a complex concept, as it's a very, a very small screen with a lot of text and images. Um, so we switched to doing it on a tablet. Um, in the future, we want to have a mobile version as well. Um, I would be happy to hear if you have any ideas um, to how this, in which format this could be interesting to you. If you have a project that you like to assess, um, would you want to do it on the go when you're on the train, um, or does it matter? Um, and this was it. It was very short. Um, I, I, yeah. Yeah. You sure? Well, yeah. Okay, okay. I think I skipped a few things. Okay, okay, okay. And can you tell me, I didn't understand it totally, but you can use it also you, uh, during the start and also during the total process of the project? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can, you can fill in the date when you add a project. You can okay. say if it's still going okay. or if it's something that has been completed okay. in the past. Okay. You can, you can do it okay. twice. And where is it being used at the moment? It's still developing. Now. Oh, still developing. Yes, we're okay. aiming to have it finished on January 1st. first. Okay, edition. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions? Han? Yeah, I have a question to you, Mr. Chairman. Oh. You have several projects going on in the north of the Netherlands, amongst other things, in Drenthe, with tourism development. Hmm? Isn't this the tool that you should be using? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I, I, sh I should, uh, perhaps we can try it. We can try it out. So I invited you uh, very much to, uh, to be with me in Drenthe, and we can try uh, if we can use it in the, in the context I'm working at at the moment. Yeah. 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 Friday, this 
Is that the event? No, Friday. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. It's very quick, Friday. No, I thought that's what you said. That's tomorrow. Yes, that's tomorrow. No, that's, that's too quick. That's too quick. That's too quick. No, the day after tomorrow, that's <laughs> too quick. But we make an appointment. Huh? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Janine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I miss providing a bit of context in the in the forest where you could get lost. Um, as the, there are three methods that are so large, it can be hard for the project owner, but also for people who want to estimate, see where they want to maybe allocate funds to, to see where a project can deliver and can add value. Um, so on both sides, that could be very okay. functional. Okay. And are you looking for other partners than me uh, to uh, to, uh, Anyone to improve who has the a project? That, that, no? that, yeah. you, you have already enough or not? Are you looking for partners? I think we're always interested in partners. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean partners in the project, of course. And that's yeah. that's okay. also what I was. Yeah. Wondering. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, to use the tool to, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm looking to the to the, our the people from the from the audio. Can we have a, a handy microphone? That's perhaps uh, easy because I I think uh, back in the in the room the people cannot understand what you what you ask. But uh, um, you and uh, please. Yeah. Mm. Now you have so much success in uh, with interaction and and the need for your tool. Is it the case that Mr. Jan BBA will be lower on the list? <laughs> uh, Since he was a little bit critical in the beginning. It's enough well, though, he, eh? The option of Friday is off the table. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions at the moment? No? Janine, thank you very much. Thank you. We keep in touch. Yes. Next, Hanna. Hanna Marcinkowski. She's telling about modeling energy. Hannah, to you the floor, please. Yes, thank you. And um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you for having me here and giving me a stage for um, telling a bit about my research in the past, but maybe also in the future. And I was invited also uh, by Hannah and uh, Simon to, um, to come over here. Um, they had to come all the way to the north of Germany to invite me personally. Um, so they had to come to the, uh, my home island, which is in North Friesland, um, called Föhr. And um, it's very similar to this region, so they don't feel so foreign uh, when they come to Föhr. Um, before we had to go to the dangerous territories of Samsø um, in the Baltic. So, um, yeah, so I want to give you a bit of overview of what I'm doing. I'm actually from Aalborg University. Um, where I did my PhD on this topic, um, but I'm originally also from a Frisian island, so I'm very happy to be here and maybe in the future connect these ideas. Um, yeah, so um, I want to give you a brief uh, journey um, from energy planning, what we do in Aalborg, to islands, and maybe also backwards, what we get from islands um, into energy planning in the, in the end. 
So um, the background is sustainable energy planning. That's the department I work in, um, where we do um, energy system analysis and modeling. In my PhD that you see also on the picture there on the right, I worked on the SMILE project, to which Mark gave you a little introduction. And I will maybe fill in some gaps, or maybe you will um, get some repetition, but maybe it gives you an idea of what we actually do in SMILE. Um, and then uh, finding out what is the connection between sustainable energy planning and modeling and the role of islands in that. And finally, the destination could be um, the potential future research and the future of islands in this regard. So I was working a lot um, with SMILE. So we're looking at, at islands here in a general uh, perspective when we look at islands in energy planning and what can we learn from them. So. Um, yeah, I'll get into this a little bit, and also the picture shows me in Aalborg, which I've used this picture when it was online presentations, um, um, when the university in the background was actually closed, but they had this nice art installation, and I could take a picture with the letter Ö, which is the letter for island in Denmark. So um, this is what we'll be talking about. Um, yeah, so sustainable energy planning at Aalborg University um, is not so much uh, energy engineering or energy technology, but it's um, the whole concept of uh, climate change and energy transition and how sustainable energy um, is part of that. So um, we look at both at the historical but also technical and contextual uh, aspects. Um, some of the images I added to the slide are that um, in the 70s the fossil fuel prices increased quite a lot also in Denmark, so they were forced to invest uh, in alternatives. So the wind power became a big, big uh, thing in Denmark. But we don't just look at the technology of wind power, but also how it fits into the energy system and how we can actually implement it. So we look at different sustainable perspectives from um, economic sides, of course, but also environmental and social aspects into this. And eventually, what we come up with is um, also a smart energy system, so where we combine not just sustainable aspects, but also the different parts of the energy system in a smart way. And other things we do include, of course, not just economics, but socioeconomics, economics um, public regulations, market development, life cycle assessments, uh, jobs, and so on. Um, Specifically, um, the tool, uh, we talked about tools before, the tool that we're doing or that we're making, uh, working with is energy system analysis and the modeling. And then afterwards, we look into the implementation. So we see uh, on this image that I've <laughs> been using now uh, quite uh, some time um, that we try to connect the different um, uh, energy systems from electricity to heating, industry, maybe also cooling, and see how, where can we use waste products, so somebody, somebody's waste might, some, might be somebody else's resource, um, where can we make use of synergies, um, improve energy efficiency, and, and use renewables in any way uh, that is possible. So we look um, from the production side, from the technology on the one hand, but also to the conversion and to the consumer. So how do we supply not just electricity demands, but also heating demands, transport demands, and so on. Um, and that is also what we try to simplify in the model at the bottom of the picture. Um, so we look at what happens in this energy system if we change uh, one uh, aspect. For example, if we introduce electric vehicles or hydrogen, what happens in the end of the energy system that we need to be aware of? And this is um, uh, an open access tool that we've developed uh, in my research group, and um, we've also uh, used this in a lot of different contexts, and I'll get to back to that in a minute. Um, yeah, so the idea is that uh, this is supposed to support energy transitions, that we give a plan, we give a strategy of how the energy system can look like, or how does it look now, and how can it develop in the future. And we do this both on national scale, we work a lot with Denmark, but also European scale, but also local systems are even more important, because there we can actually see what happens locally. Which brings me to the project that I was involved in, which is the SMILE project. In case you uh, missed it earlier, it stands for Smart Island Energy. Um, of course, Mark introduced uh, to you that um, we are testing and demonstrating different parts of technologies, but also reflecting how does it actually work. Um, then from our sustainable energy aspects, we also look into the context um, locally, um, how to implement it, and how does it fit with the reality on the islands. So we have the three uh, 
demo islands, um, Samsui, Orkney, and Madeira. So, for example, how does the wind power on Orkney, um, how can it best be used locally? Um, on Samsu, we have um, new PV on, on the marina buildings. Or on Madeira, we have um, tourist vehicles now charged with um, renewable electricity. And then we'd look at how does this actually fit into the community? What kind of market structures do we need? And what policies maybe need to change so that it fits also to islands, so this whole energy transition perspectives. Um, yeah. Um, so what I uh, ended up uh, looking into in my PhD was then the role of uh, what, why do we do modeling and, and what can we learn from islands. So of course we have this energy system in a very uh, simplified box diagram and then if it is on an island it's even um, simplified yet. Uh, so we can see even better maybe what changes if, uh, if we improve something or if, uh, if electric vehicles are really a solution. Um, so, um, and then as Mark also said, that afterwards maybe we can roll it up, uh, roll it out and scale it up and find out what are the potentials of this innovation and how do we need to coordinate it maybe in a different way. So, by doing it with islands, we can also strengthen these locations that are usually not really on the agenda when we talk on national energy policy making or energy planning, but we can actually include the islands and their local conditions and maybe also the people. So it's not just these boxes, it's a lot more that we need to be doing. Um, so hopefully also with the input from these islands, we can improve the way we do our modeling and the way we can uh, achieve our energy transitions that are so important to do. But also I want to give the option for islands to influence the developments of energy planning and the transition. So when we look at um, the, the diagram, if we look at it a bit closer, we can actually see that there's a lot of numbers and a lot of details maybe that we're missing if we only look at it from a, a top-down uh, perspective. Um, and then also when we compare and include different islands and different technologies, we get a bit of even a better picture and we see that there's, they're all the same, they're all islands and we all have energy demands and, and production and resources, but in the end um, some things work better in some areas than in others. So hopefully um, the idea is that islands can also influence the future of this modeling. After all, there's a lot of islands here in the Netherlands, um, across the North Sea also, Germany, Denmark, even the UK. Um, worldwide there are so many islands. Um, Denmark has uh, actually 70-something islands which are inhabited. So it is a country of islands, but they don't really consider it as, as such. But what if they would do? What if we look at the islands in a different way that they're actually quite an important role to have um, in energy making? Um, yeah, so uh, we know that sustainable energy and the energy transition can be difficult on islands and in remote regions, but maybe we can work together and, and work how can we get this top-down support, but actually action on the, from the bottom up. And that's also the images trying to illustrate what if we look at islands in a different way from, from national energy making, um, instead of this top-down advice from the capital, um, this is what the islands should also follow suit, but what if they actually work together and influence um, policy making and then maybe our puzzle of the energy transition becomes quite transparent. Yeah, so this could um, of course also lead to further research, that's uh, one of the reasons that I'm here, um, that we include islands in sustainable energy planning that we do planning with islands, um, both for islands, but also with islands, so there's a lot of wordplay you have to be careful about. Um, the cross-sector um, aspects are also important to consider in your future um, energy plan, maybe, but also the cross-border collaboration. I think that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm, I live in Denmark, I'm from Germany, and I'm very happy to be here to find out um, what are the similarities and where can we work together. And then finally, that we can um, get some contributions from and also with islands and to strengthen the energy systems and be part of this energy transition. And maybe we can look into um, these uh, Dutch or Danish artificial energy islands, but also general North Sea uh, energy islands. What is out there and what can we learn from and what is it actually, which direction should we go from uh, for energy planning? 
Um, then we also know that the marine energy sector is often forgotten. Um, the big politicians, they sit somewhere where there's no water in sight, um, but we live in the middle of it often. Um, there's energy around um, and there's also uh, demands um, to get through the water to the islands. So when we look at um, the island, uh, in the picture we see the view of Orkney Island from the Scottish mainland. What do we see? Like, can we actually get influence? from islands to energy planning, or is it only the top-down approach of energy planning to the islands? Um, so in the future, hopefully, islands can be working together with energy planners. Um, they can help and also learn from each other um, in this regard. Of course, we, I know that you're all working on this already, but maybe now I give you some even more uh, motivation to do so. Um, try to combine new research areas also with the local problems, so make it better, um, more inclusive, this um, approach. Um, we talk about uh, today that we go from good practices to next practices. Maybe we go back to see what is actually the relation across the North Sea. I, I noticed back home, across the water, it's 250 kilometers, and if I go by land, it's 500, so it's twice as much um, to, get, uh, to make a connection there. And, and finally, use the energy that we have on this island. There's a lot of innovation drive, there's um, ideas, and, and the picture also shows this is the tidal streams around the Orkney Islands. And, and I know now you're also looking into um, um, tidal projects in Ameland. And so, yeah, some ideas of how we can use this energy and, um, and energy planning uh, in a sustainable way. I think that's it, yes. So this is uh, one of our next destinations. Um, so hopefully, yeah, look into um, the role of energy and maybe modeling and planning in a sustainable way for your next island innovation. And um, this is a picture of the island when you uh, get to Fur. So we made it um, across the, the North Sea. Um, we also speak Frisian there. Um, so Fur Tank, uh, thank you um, a lot uh, for having me. <laughs> Hannah, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for Hannah? I think uh, Boa before asked the question bottom down, top up, and uh, you answered that, huh? that it's echt needed to be, success to be uh, successful. Yeah, this is where things are happening in the end. Yeah. Like they want to have more decentral energy, but we also need to include the people who are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome to uh, reach out also later. Um, okay. I'm here all okay. day and happy to chat. No questions anymore? No? Hannah, thank you. Thank you. Wish you afterwards. <laughs> Bonnie, Hi. it's your turn. <laughs> Islands of Innovation, we uh, invited more or less the tipping wheel and you were going to tell us something about the tipping wheel. Yeah, I will. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, well, hi, everyone. Um, I've never been nervous for a speech before, but it's amazing what two years of isolation will do for you. <laughs> Maybe I can get some tips from the islanders later about how to deal with that. <laughs> no, just kidding. So uh, my name is uh, Bonnie Ludis. I've uh, been working my entire career to help islands become sustainable, and now I'm also a lecturer at the university uh, the HZ University of Applied Sciences for Global Project and Change Management. And I'm, oh, I see my slides there. Okay, yeah, so I'm here to talk to you about why we're here today. So two words stick out in my mind, and that's islands and innovation. Uh, so the Islands of Innovation project is what gathered us all here today, and here are the islands that are involved in the project. Um, and when, you, when I think of these two words, they often go hand in hand, because islands are naturally innovative. When you're all the way there in the middle of the ocean, you have to learn how to do more with less, which is, in essence, uh, innovation. Uh, but that would be a bit too easy if we did a four-year interreg project on analyzing innovation on islands, so we had to throw in a curveball, which is policy. And policy doesn't always have the same reputation. <laughs> so 
Uh, although policy can support innovation, it can also hinder it. So we wanted to develop a tool analyzing policy on islands and making sure that it really, uh, from the bottom up and also top down, supports innovators on islands. So, um, yeah, I stole a little uh, quote from uh, Sanders' presentation, which is, uh, we not only have to think about what innovators can do for us, I changed the word innovators, but also what we can do for them. So the Islands of Innovation project developed tipping. And so tipping is an approach, a tool, and a workshop philosophy, all wrapped up into this nice guide. So we also integrate the idea of the dance floor. So that's taking old, con or not old concepts, but established concepts and theories about innovation and applying them into a new tool, getting a dance floor of different stakeholders together, and then having the result of actionable steps of what policy can actually do to support innovation. So the tipping wheel can help to create a benchmark between parts of an island or different sectors on the island. It can help us analyze challenges, it can help us create new brainstorms, and just in general get the ball rolling with innovation. It also helps to merge the two top-up and bottom-down sectors, or the two top-up and bottom-down approaches, so that we're all dancing on the same floor. So the wheel has eight spokes, and it looks like this. So uh, these are the different strategies that help us analyze the success of how well the government is doing with supporting innovation on the island. So for example, you can work with new challenges in the creative sector. You can establish long-term cooperation with SMEs and NGOs. You can stimulate the Young Entrepreneurs Network, which is especially important on islands because there is often a trend of young people leaving the island, and we want to avoid that, uh, because islands are also a great place to be, so they should be very attractive for young people. Um, and we want to involve the community, and so on. So basically, the tool helps us to analyze how well the policy is doing within each one of these components. Yeah. So uh, each strategy uh, is made up of four components, which are all comprised into a workshop. The goal is to get from the status quo to the desired future. So the inspiration is what guides us, and then we have different options of how we can do that. Uh, those lead to practical examples. So what I'm explaining to you now is basically how the tipping guide is organized. So we have these inspirations per spoke that you saw in the wheel. Uh, yeah, the different options, then we have real life examples of how islands have actually implemented these, and then we have an assessment of how well we're doing now and what our dream is for the future. So this is what it looks like. So for example, I pulled this out of the guide. This is chapter one, working with the creative sector. So one thing that you can do is stimulate exper experiments with new technologies and new societal concepts. So those are things we've heard a lot of today. Uh, you can also stimulate the development of creatives and new products and ventures. And you can stimulate new markets uh, within which they can operate. And the tipping guide hel helps you to evaluate how well you are doing within all of those components. And then we have examples. So uh, the result of this is that the policymakers host a workshop uh, together with the local stakeholders on the island to facilitate this dance floor. And you are able to measure, based on a scale of 1 to 10, how well you feel you're doing on in, within each of these components. So you can see here the result of a real workshop that we hosted with an island. So it's possible that when you uh, want to evaluate a certain uh, component of your policy, um, let's say you're just choosing working with the creative sector, you can choose one aspect or you can choose multiple. In this case, uh, we chose all of them, so we worked with all eight, eight aspects, which makes for a quite a complex workshop, but if you feel like it's better to hone in on just one or two, you can also do that. 
And so you can see here this green part is the status quo, so how the policy supports innovation now. And then the larger green part is the desired future. Of course, eventually you would want to get all the way to the edge, but it's the desired future of a realistic scenario. Okay, so in 2019, we finalized our tipping approach and we released it to the world. And this was in the form of a guide, which we also uh, made available for PDF download. Any island in the entire world could use it, and we had tipping coaches. Um, who, so the, the guide actually uh, trained coaches how to implement workshops on their own islands. So what we learned from that is that tipping does work. Uh, people on islands want to try tipping, so we had quite a lot of enthusiasm asking us to implement tipping on different islands. Uh, but what we also realized is that people don't necessarily want to train themselves on how to become a trainer with a book. So uh, these trainers that we had helping the tipping coach coaches facilitate the workshops were quite an essential component um, of the success. So we thought, okay, then we can just go to travel to different islands and help tipping coaches run workshops. Well, first of all, islands are quite isolated, so it's not, not all islands are isolated, of course, but uh, we had, for example, some interest from Polynesian islands. It's not necessarily practical to fly all the way to Polynesia every time you want to host a two-day workshop. Uh, and then, of course, came COVID, so this was solved for us. So uh, we went back to Interreg and we said, okay, tipping works, people want to use tipping, but how do we get it to the wider island audience? And they granted us a one-year extension to digitize tipping. So not only being able to have the book as a downloadable resource, but we would also like to develop master classes. So this is the stage we're in now, so we can celebrate a bit. This is actually not the closing of the Islands of Innovation project, but we've been granted a year extension. Um, so what we plan to do is to uh, have these masterclass formats, and I'm sure quite a few of you have heard of masterclasses. Um, so you basically have a coach who appears in person um, and guides you along this process. And what we've decided to do is, uh, with support of all of our island partners, that each partner films a module, relates it to real life examples that are happening on their island, and then uh, guides us through the chapters on training the trainers, basically. So for this pilot project, we've selected uh, the Azores um, to be the first um, yeah, group of islands that pilot this. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that, first of all, uh, the Azores has done incredible work on our projects, project to date, um, but also that they have uh, an island archipelago. So it's a nice place to pioneer um, the philosophy on different islands of different sizes within one uh, archipelago. So what will happen is uh, we will develop this new process, this, these master classes, and then we will, through these, train the tipping coaches in the Azores, and they will go to their islands and then host tipping workshops. And with these results, we will um, get the feedback both from the workshop participants and also from the coaches themselves and refine the process. And our goal for this is that we will be able to spread the tipping approach to make policy really support innovation on islands in the future. Yeah, so uh, this is the Azores. We had uh, yeah, the luxury of being able to go there for our last uh, partner meeting and it was absolutely wonderful. And I've heard that uh, we have a very special guest from the Azores today to also speak to you about how they will go forward with the Islands of Innovation project. So by digitizing the tipping process and creating these interactive coaching sessions, we're also increasing innovation within our own project. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions, of course. Any questions? Do you have any questions? <laughs> no, you make me change my program because you already told more or less that the next step in the, using the tipping guide is uh, to the Azores and uh, 
in my original program, uh, Mr. Uh, I must read his name, Mr. Pedro Faria e Castro was the last speaker because of the source, but I think uh, it's, well, the, it's the moment now he can tell us about the source <laughs> because you made already your effing part for him. So I'm just trying to be innovative. <laughs> eh? Is it a good idea you can do it? <laughs> okay. May I invite you, please? If there are no questions for Hannah at the moment. Yeah, then maybe I have a question. Okay, I, uh, okay, okay. I take the microphone because that's, everybody can hear you. There must be a button, but you can find him. I was super intrigued about the point about the youth. You say, okay, how with the youth networks regarding innovation, can you tell a bit about how this results with them or how this resonates with them? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I can give a concrete example. So um, when we were visiting the Azores, uh, I guess in 2019, um, we, re we looked at this project called Tercera Tech Island, um, which is actually a project that was uh, financed um, and, well, at least supported by the government um, through policy that uh, the island would invest in these coding workshops for new startups on the island. So they actually, um, yeah, facilitated through their adapted policies that um, youth who were already living on the island would get their stay and their training funded um, to become coders and also especially female coders, and then start uh, and then start companies on the island. Um, so that's an example of how youth can be involved, but another way is that we actually try to integrate them into the dance floor itself. So when we host these tipping workshops, you can even invite a six-year-old, and sometimes they have really great ideas. So it's not just about talking to people from one sector or with one different background, but also really integrating the youth. Okay. Any questions more? Mark. Yes, I have a question. Um, that is that there is this EU island secretary, uh, uh, and I think that there are some of this umbrella for at least energy related uh, project development and support for islands. Uh, are you already in, uh, in contact with them or do you consider that? Because I think that this is a really, this can, this can be a really important tool also uh, to get the broader uh, exposure. Uh, yeah, I would like to pass that question on to one of my colleagues. Are we already in contact with them? No. 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 Yeah, so if... Uh, I think that would make a lot of sense. Of course, uh, Liso is mainly focused on, uh, on energy, but mm -hmm. uh, obviously it can be one of the, one of the branches. So yeah. I think that would make a lot of sense to also create impact on what we've done uh, over here and make it work throughout the, uh, throughout the whole other island. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. thank you for the sure. tip. And energy is also a large component of, of the work that we've been doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Good point. Good point. Any questions more in a moment? Are you still there? Of do I to tell have I to tell a, a joke? Because I, be, I, I see some eyes a little bit. Uh, okay. Everybody there? Can we? Can we? No. No joke. No joke. No joke. <laughs> no joke. Uh, can we continue? Hannah, thank you. Bonnie. Oh, uh, Bonnie, thank you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of names. No, Bonnie, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Very interesting. Thank okay. You. Mr. Faria Castro, you are the regional undersecretary of the presidency of the Azores. May I invite you? So we go to the Azores with the tipping wheel. I don't know who's going with us, but we are going to the Azores. Please. Okay. Following that presentation, um, I think it's really the moment to show my pleasure to be here today with you on behalf of the government of the Azores, next to our partners uh, who have been with us since 2017. In April, we held a regional uh, online forum called the Digital Innovation Roadshow. We gathered partic participants as well as stakeholders from several Azorian islands to discuss the state of innovation in the archipelago, applying the tipping wheel online. 
we came to one conclusion. The Azores, due to its demographic ra rates and geographical dispersion, has enormous potential to be a pilot region for international testing. We want more and we intend to make the Azores an othermost region of innovation. If on, the one, uh, on one end our location allows us to take full advantage of our Atlantic centrality, on the other end our Europe Europeanist roots allow us to increase the size and projection of the EU in external relations. Friends, if we thought that today this project was coming to an end, it is with great pleasure that I officially announce the, its extension until September 2022. It is with great satisfaction that the Azores will be cons consolidated as a pilot region in the extension of this project. This and this opportunity is extremely important for the Azores. We are excited and confident in the role that our region will play and that we will be a natural laboratory for innovation. First, let me announce the various stages of this new role for the Azores, where several approaches and tests will be made for final conclusions of the islands of innovation. There are, first, the digitalization of the tipping approach leading to a global digital train the trainer guides and toolbox. Second, the further elaboration of tipping models on user friendliness in applying the UN Sustainable Development Goals, mission-based project development, if effectuation-based entrepreneurship, sustainable business innovation-oriented ecosystem building, smart governments, and finally, the final conference on the second semester of 2022 in the Azores to reveal the results. And of course, you are all invited for it. Friends, it is an honor for the government of the Azores to assume this role. We want to invest heavily in innovation and training. It is our goal to create regional coaches and to test on several Azorian islands, approaches of the tipping wheel and on a wide variety of, to of topics. We truly believe that the Azores will establish itself as an innov innovative othermost region and that this will be a useful project. From us, we can assure that we will be active partners and that we will certainly achieve results and good practices which we intend to share with other European countries and regions. That is why there will be a meeting of partners as early as next Friday to put the extension into practice and we will develop the rule of the Azores as a project pilot. To all our partners and the others here present, I thank you for the invitation to be here in order to make this announcement that honors us so much. To uh, Jan Wieder and Albert Rutter, thank you for your warm reception. Thank you very much and let's dance together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're very happy that you will be continuing the project Island of Innovation in Azores, and we look forward to see you there. Hope so. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now we have a connection, if it's, uh, if it's good, I would say, with uh, Brussel, I think. Brussel. Oh, I'm in Lille. I'm in Lille. I live in Lille. 
Okay, okay, hi. okay, okay. Hi, 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 hi. Alexis, hi. -o. Very welcome. Are you on screen? Everybody can uh, look at you. Okay, cool. You're at, you're at home? Still, yes. Still working at home with the COVID-19 problems or not? Partly. Okay. Partly still working, yes. Okay. And uh, you are the product officer of uh, Interact Europe and uh, you're going to tell us something about uh, the project's Island of Innovation, but in, in, a, in a further scale, the Interact project in it totally. Uh, Yes, um, I'm the finance officer of Islands of Innovation. So yes, I've been following the project since uh, the very beginning. So it's a pleasure for me to be here with you today, even though I couldn't be physically with you. Um, I don't know how you want to proceed. Do I share my okay. screen or do you have okay. a presentation? In okay, I, I take a sheet and everybody is looking at you. So I give you the floor by screen, yes. And you okay, have, so uh, you, my... you have, you have. Then I can... Yes, I, I have it. I, can, I have I to. I, I have to look at the schedule also. So, if you don't mind, uh, look at your no watch, problem. and uh, you have 15 minutes. It's okay with you? Sure. Yeah, it's perfect. No okay. Problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, up. all right. So, can you now see the the PowerPoint? Yes. No. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, yes. cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll start. Okay, so um, this is the content of, of this small presentation. The idea is not to hammer you with um, too much information about the program, but as I reckon that you have also stakeholders with you, that you brought stakeholders with you, and that uh, they are not always very familiar with what the program is doing. Um, there is a small recap about the activities financed by the program. Then I'll focus a bit more on uh, what we call your family of projects uh, working on innovation capacity. And then a few elements of the, about your results and um, achievements. And to finish a few words about the, the future of the program, uh, you might be interested in that part. Okay, so um, the program finances two type or two types, sorry, of, of activities. Um, the projects uh, is really the, let's say the main, in parts of the financing of the program, as you know. So we had four successful calls uh, with more than 250 projects, which was not expected at the beginning. So in terms of uh, human resources, it was not always easy to manage so many projects, but in the end, uh, it was feasible. So we're happy that, uh, that uh, more and more projects are actually delivering results. And uh, this is also why I'm, I'm with you today. Um, and as you can see about these results, uh, thanks to, to, the, to all the projects, we already reached the objectives that were set initially um, in the cooperation program. So in terms of staff with increased capacity, in terms of action plans, many, many good practices also have been identified all over Europe. And more than 2,000 are also on the PLP platform. I will uh, get back to this point a bit later. So this is very important and we are very, very grateful because um, I mean, these results are thanks to you. Um, another important point of the program and a key figure that we, we follow, uh, we call it the leverage effect. Uh, it means that for each euro of the RDF um, invested by the program in the project, uh, six more euros are invested on the ground on top of it, thanks to the results uh, you, you had uh, uh, by exchanging, by cooperating, um, one euro of your RDF generates six more euros locally, regionally. So this is also something very important because it means that thanks to the projects, then you generate new projects, new ideas, new calls, and you take over the financing and you, you continue with the results. So this is a, really a key figure. And... Uh, and again, also congratulations because, because this is also thanks to you. Sorry. Okay, second type of activity, uh, the policy learning platforms. As I was saying, um, if you go to the, um, the website of the program, interagurope.eu, you have a specific portal for the platforms where you can find a community of peers, where you can network there, meaning that if you create a profile there, you can indicate your interest in terms of topics, in terms of policies. And you can, let's say, find uh, people with a similar uh, profile uh, who could be interested to talk 
with you and exchange ideas on, on a specific topic, for instance. You also have the, the good practices database that I was mentioning a bit earlier. And there, it's a bit the same principle. You can find uh, good practices from all over Europe um, about the topic you're interested in. And of course, uh, you can also, you can always ask for the support of the experts. Um, they have a help desk and there is one expert per topic per, per TO. So in case you have any specific question also for your region, you can always reach out to them. Um, I think they are still uh, organizing actually peer reviews, but it's not online peer reviews. So uh, it's usually managing authorities, uh, which request to the program, I mean, to the, to the PLP to be um, to, to have a peer review on a specific field on a specific policy they're implementing in the region. And then uh, the experts together, coming together with those uh, managing authorities from, from Europe, they give them advice uh, and they help them to, to improve also the, the way they manage a specific policy. So it can also be of, of interest to you. Um, and if you want to see a bit the calendar, uh, you can also check this out on the website. Mm, a really, really, uh, real quick about the COVID, um, because you already know that we launched a call uh, really, I mean, uh, sorry for all the really, <laughs> um, based, I mean, on the, on the COVID and how the regions could recover from the COVID and could, uh, again, identify good practices that um, help them to, to recover from the COVID. So you participated successfully in the fifth call. So again, um, congratulations for that. And I heard that you were talking about the pilot action and this is also good news that you could, uh, within the, the scope of the fifth call, apply to, uh, to a pilot action. So we look forward to seeing uh, your, your results uh, next year with the new year of cooperation about, uh, about the COVID. Now, if we focus a bit more on uh, your family of projects, as we call them, as you can see, pretty much uh, all, all the continent uh, is participating in, in this project and on innovation capacity uh, in, uh, with, a more focus, with a focus on this, it's 17 projects, but you're the only one to, to, to work on the islands. So it's a very, very specific topic. You're the only one. And this is actually one of the, of the strengths of the project. Um, this, uh, this, this very specific to topic is also complemented by a very strong focus on structural funds, which was a, a big also objective of the program for 2014, 2020. So this was also, um, let's say, an asset uh, when we received your application you also managed to, uh, to get a good results actually at project level with many uh, policy learning events organized, many people who uh, declared that they had their, uh, their let's say, staff with increased capacity thanks to the project activities. So this is, uh, this is very good. And again, of course, your application for additional activities, which was, uh, I mean, I think really solid and we didn't need uh, many rounds of clarification to refine it or, or to really clarify. So it was a good application. And again, we look forward to seeing what you achieve next year. Also, I'd like to thank you very much for your active contribution at program level, because um, you have 10 good practices um, which have been selected on the portal of the policy learning platforms. So this is a very good number. Not so many projects managed to achieve uh, this figure because the experts really select, let's say, the ones which are really relevant for, for as many institutions as, as possible. So this is a really good, uh, really good figure. And also congratulations for the four policy changes that you already achieved. Again, we'll follow this closely uh, in the last progress reports that is due end of December. And of course, uh, after this, again, uh, with the result that, that you will achieve uh, thanks to the fifth call and the additional activities on COVID uh, recovery. Um, I'll finish uh, this presentation with a few words about the future of the program because maybe you're not all aware of, uh, of it. So um, we are now finalizing the cooperation program, which should be signed by all uh, partner states, uh, which are committed again for the next programming period. So all 
of the ones which were involved in the current program, uh, minus uh, the UK. So once all partner states have signed this, uh, this cooperation program and agree to, to go again for a new programmation, then we send this uh, program to the commission for in case they have comments, and then we would be formally approved after, uh, let's say that their comments are clarified. So we really hope that we'll be able to launch a few, I mean, the first call, sorry, of the new program early next year. So that would be really the objective. In terms of organization, the key features would be the same, <clears throat> meaning that the whole territory of the Europe uh, of Europe plus plus sorry Norway and Switzerland would be would be I mean participating. The objective would be more or less the same, meaning that uh, it would be still a capacity building program, really focusing on the stakeholder uh, and of course on the policymakers, which can actually have a say on the policies uh, which are targeted. Uh, same types of activities, so policy learning events mainly, but. As you can see, uh, also a learning by doing, which is, uh, I mean, represented, let's say, by the pilot actions that you could have already in phase one, because in the current program, pilot actions were only for phase two, were really, uh, let's say, specific and quite uh, rare, let's say. Um, in the future program, you'll have the opportunity to suggest uh, in your application already, so at application stage, pilot actions to test concrete actions on the ground and have implementation oriented activities from the beginning. So this is really a new thing, a new feature. Also the focus on structural funds will be a bit lightened and uh, to allow you to, uh, to really, sorry, <coughs> to really tackle um, all the, um, the policies which are relevant at your level in terms of thematics, of course, uh, there will be only one single priority in the program on a better cooperation governance. So it will be mainly smarter Europe, greener Europe, and more social Europe. So this should also a broader, let's say, a broader array of, uh, of, of, of projects in the future. Okay, thank you very much for, for listening okay. to, the, to okay. this presentation. I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, okay, Alec, thank uh, you very you much uh, for your contribution to the program. And uh, of course, also thank you for your congratulations uh, in our direction. Uh, we're very happy with it. So we can be looking uh, forward with confidence for next projects. Yes. Uh, I will ask in the, in, the, in the room if there are any questions. Alex, no questions, but we can always find you by the... Yeah, we have questions, no? Yes, I see here, no? No, 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 no. Oh, no, they're just waving at you. May, uh, may I thank you uh, very much for this moment, and of course, we, uh, we have our regular, regular contacts via Albert and, uh, and Simon uh, for the next steps we want to make. Of course, and uh, you may have also seen that uh, we sent a new email this morning because there will be a new colleague, colleague sorry, uh, as a policy officer following your project, Chris Taps. So you will also be in touch with him. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Bye. Have a good day as well. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, uh, More or less, we, uh, we are uh, coming. No, not, not totally. We're coming more or less to an end of the afternoon. And now it's um, our friend Simon, Simon. Where is he? He's already retiring and... Uh... Oh, no. I, I lost my notes. Oh, you lost uh, your notes. Is, is, is it already working, this thing? Yeah. You know, I can do it without it. I give you the floor. Because You're retiring officially, but you don't stop working. I know what it is, okay. just going on. But huh? I, I can do it without All it. All soldiers never die, so... Uh, I gave you the floor for a, okay. an overview. But, uh, but Sander, but also start this morning of this afternoon with soil and soul. So, uh, so. And I heard a story. We are from Delta area. We can do it without a microphone. Because in the Delta area, it's flat and it's all clay. And you have to shout to each other in order to understand. But for a convenience, I 
will use this microphone, but the clay is in our soul, yeah? And that's what we do. Uh, and I'm asked to give a summary, but I can't give a summary. I, it's so hard to make this, uh, make a summary. I grasp some slides, but I will skip through some, and I will show you a few. But the word which came up with me after these people were on the stage, I'm very proud. That's, that's so proud. There is so much energy and there's so much nice ideas about how to go on and there is something happening on these islands. And when I start as a policy maker at the province of Friesland a very long time ago, and these islands were peripheral area. Uh, nothing happens on these islands. Whoa, that was only, well, we don't talk about these islands. This is terrible. There's no economic activity. We don't want to, to deal with them. And uh, all the money we go, goes to the islands, it's, it's lost. And now uh, we are in the center of the world, on the edge of the world. Innovation is happening on the islands. So these islands are a cradle to innovation. And that's what I learned when I started studying economics, because that's my background. I studied economics. And I learned from Alfred Marshall, one of the founders of the economic theory, that the mecca of the economist lies in biology. And we have so much biology around us, and we may have to make use of it. I think, and I learned it from Joram and from, uh, from Han, because I'm a macroeconomist and I was not that much involved in innovation, but I learned from them, you have to make use of your own situation, of your, you have to develop your own, uh, uh, how, how you call it, USPs, uh, uh, unique selling points, uh, something in marketing, I, I think. But you have to make use of it. That's are the comparative advantages of your region. So we were, th we were not that so self-confident at that time, but that's changing and seeing this and ha listening to all the stories of these young people, uh, you only can be proud. There is, this will be a catalyst, these islands will be a catalyst of our new future. And I hope I can help uh, building this new future because I'm a transfer station by myself. So I, uh, some start with a flying crow, always get something. But that's a guy in the background. I learned that from him. And I hope I can pass this to the younger people. And I will show you, I think, two slides. I can uh, skip these. I don't know how. I don't, I'm not that good in technology. The green bot. This project, Islands, and, and I, now Jan Janssen is entering the room, I always I uh, almost forgot, because he's from Samsø, and just Samsø get an award today of the, how you call it, Jan? Or, yeah, Samsø just got the prize as the UN climate leaders, and they will fly to Glasgow, that's sustainable, and to get <laughs> to receive this the reward in Glasgow. Yeah, so... That's what I learned from their island. There are only 1,000 inhabitants, or a little less. If we count Jan for two, then they have a little bit more. But they have only, and then they achieve the UN climate change uh, uh, reward, and that's only a few people can make the difference. That's why it's so important to act locally, or to act globally, and uh, it's to work globally and act locally. Yeah? This project uh, starts with this drawing. Now you can understand, my mom was not allowing me to go to art academy. Uh, because this is a really terrible uh, drawing, but I think the essence of what we want to achieve with Islands of Innovation now, and in the future, and in the past, is in this, uh, is in this drawing. Why we are working with the Islands of Innovation? I think you got plenty of examples this afternoon of why we are doing these islands of innovation. And I think there's a potential which is much bigger. You are not in a peripheral area, you're on the edge of the new world. 
So, uh, and how? You know, what's what? I think, and that's what I learned from my teacher, for example, the Wadden Sea is an area birds get in, migrating birds get in, migrating birds get out, they drop something, and they get something. So, if we invite these young people, and I think we have proven this this afternoon, if you bring them to the island, then you will discover they will bring something to you. And they also get something for you, but they will become ambassadors of the island. So bring young people and breed these ideas on the island. How? The dance floor? No. You can see I'm limping, so it's more Freudian to use this dance floor, because I, I can't dance at all. Uh, but that's why I use this dance floor, and I agree with Linda to make a festival of it. I, I think life has to be a festival, and then all ni nice things will happen on this festival, and you can apply that in your common life. Uh, and then we, who? And I think that's very important, and that I think we have lost during the last decades. We have to do it together. The government, the NGOs, the public, the, uh, the enterprises, the knowledge institutes, the universities, if we want to address the, uh, the, the challenges of the future, there's only one thing we can do, and that's bringing together and put our shoulders under these huge global problems which we have to solve local. As I said, I'm a transfer station, I'm also a policymaker, so I will give a framework for what can be of use in the future, so you can use it. That's one thing I want to give, and I hope this meeting will end up on the dance floor, and the young people are connected with the old people, and some old people say, I, I will help you, because this is so important for us. I, I will help you to bring this forward. I think, and that's what I learned also in my career, that's very important, to bring these connections. Connections between people from different areas, from all over Europe. Uh, to bring in diverse uh, uh, points of view, how to solve these problems. Connections between the landscape, as we told about this clay. It's very important to be embedded in your history in order to face the future. All these connections are very important. And I hope people will connect that's the goal of this meeting. We'll connect with each other uh, during this evening, and I don't know when the party is ending, but Dennis asked me, can I get a taxi at one o'clock in the, in the night? So I think uh, it will be a long party. <laughs> so, and this is a little bit abstract story, but I hope to bring in together all the things you heard this afternoon. We start with the mission. That's what... Sander said about Mariana Mezzucato. She said, the first mission, which was very successful, is putting, uh, President Kennedy said, putting a man on the moon. And most people forget that he also said, and bring them back safely. Uh, but this mission, we called it the Blue Delta, because we are a Delta area. We have some islands in the Delta. But Delta also means change. And we have to change in order to address these huge problems. Within these missions, we do it within this social of sustainable development goals. And it's rather complex, but you heard of Janine, there will be a tool when it's easy. And then you will have a lot of fun doing your projects and do the assessment of the projects. We developed in Friesland three submissions inspired by water. That's related to the Delta area. Be circular, that's because you have to close the loops in order to address the problems of the future, and exploring local communities. We are local, just like on the islands, we are local communities, and we have a lot of power and a lot of strengths. That's why we became capital of culture in 2018, and we want to elaborate on that. In order to get projects, because it's all about projects, uh, we create this dance floor, and this dance floor has to, uh, the result of the dance floor has to be a portfolio of bottom-up projects which uh, are addressing the sub-goals and the goals of our mission. And 
in order. We are in the Delta. We all already heard from Mark that we have a lighthouse project on Ameland, but we have some more lighthouse projects. And in order to ignite this uh, dance floor, we developed uh, uh, several instruments. And we call it a roer. It's a rudder in English. But we call it a roer because you have to steer in the delta all the time. The delta is changing all the time, so you have to steer all the time. And in this rudder means the R is for roots. That's the way we want to achieve our goal. The O stands for uh, uh, organization. In order to achieve these goals, we have to organize in another way. We have to cooperate. But also the government has to, has to be kicked out of their chairs and don't want to achieve something by bottom-up, but by facilitating bottom-up processes. That's very important. Uh, we have lost, also as a government, contact with the, with the common people. Uh, and we have goals which are not similar to what society wants. So we have to change our behavior as well. And I think that's very important. And I think we are now on the edge of, of this changing process. Because when I graduated, I was... Uh, taught by the ideas of John Maynard Keynes. And at that time, the monetarist, the Friedman, was coming up. And then we had this market, small government, deregulation. But now it will change, I think. And that's a huge opportunity for these young people to start uh, bringing forward their ideas. That was the uh, O. The other one of the Ruhr, that's the E. And that's about evaluation. That is what Janine told you about. If we want to achieve these missions, we have to evaluate our project in a different way. And now we can gain economic growth by uh, decreasing poverty, for example, because that's a part of the uh, sustainable development goals. So it's much broader. It becomes much more interesting. It gives a lot of opportunity for innovation but also a lot of certainty, and that's what governments have to deal with as well. But we need to uh, assess our projects in another way. And the last R is about rewards and risks. So nowadays, the public suffers the losses, and the, uh, the profits are going to the private sector. And so I think we have to develop, also within the context of the EU, uh, instruments which, uh, which allocates the profits to the people who did it. And I think that are all the four parties. Within this uh, rudder, we have some f four, uh, a few more spokes. And one of the spokes is, of course, instruments. And one of the instruments Bonnie was telling you was about uh, the tipping guide and these are all kinds of instruments that are available to make this dance floor much uh, more effective than, with, uh, than at it is at this moment. And I think my speaking time, I have five uh, minutes left, but I think this is enough. And I, I hope you will enjoy, uh, you enjoy, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, uh, afternoon but I hope you will enjoy even more and go, go back with a lot of energy uh, the next couple of hours. So I say, enjoy. Thank you very much. Topi. Yeah, the last minutes are from uh, for Han and uh, for me. I just one minute, and you have four minutes. I gave you the microphone. No, that's the presentation. Oh, the presentation. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah well, okay. well, Jan, thank you so much. It was just five seconds. We were on the same level for the first time in my life. <laughs> and uh, I never had thought that I could reach that, that level. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry that uh, I'm 
after uh, Simon Teisma, some people sometimes call us because we have been working quite a lot together, thanks to, uh, to Joram Kroeser and others who brought us together as the two Muppets. Um, now, you know that Muppets agree, but they also are happy to disagree. So I totally disagree with the, the story of Simon about all these instruments and what he has been uh, telling you. Let's be honest. Here in front of you, you have this uh, contribution that we delivered uh, via Islands of Innovation to, let's say, sustainable policy innovation on islands. And at the beginning of the project, we were very much disappointed by what we could find in theory, because there was nothing like a good governance of innovation theory on islands, not even something that you could work with like governance of innovation in general. There are thousands of instruments, policy mixes. What should you do? So we had a fallback strategy and we said, we take best practices, we work with the islands, uh, we exchange these best practices, and maybe even out of best practices or good practices, the next practices will uh, appear. And the, exactly that is what happened. So, um, but we made a lot of mistakes, like in line with what, what Teisma and others have said, that we have to admit to. So, Simon, what you bring as a success, I would say, is a huge mistake. And that's why I'm so happy that today these mistakes have been discovered and presented by the youngsters that we had today uh, uh, presenting their, their ideas and, and their developments. So, for instance, uh, Sander, um, you make us realize that our picture is only part of the picture. There are all these others, economic, financial, uh, legal, regulation, communication, education instruments. What we contribute, more or less, is something extra. I would say the instruments from the creative class that work for and with islands, which are something extra, but not necessarily are in place of the others. We still need the drivers for, for CO2 pricing, etc. So we cannot see this independently of the whole system around it, which you sketched. And of course, you sketched also that uh, you don't have necessarily to be in the dance floor to facilitate the dance floor. Then, uh, Eileen, it is wonderful to see from your example that you and the people uh, like Marcel and others in your room who, who uh, joined you in this uh, effort, you started with, I would say, best practices in, in uh, the waste from, from the sea, and then you realized that you could create something totally new, which we would call next practices. So that's more on the right side of, of this, this uh, system. Then, uh, as support um, from Hanna, uh, but also from Mark de la Viter, we see that if we don't work with proper modeling, we can try many things, but we don't know what we are doing. And uh, I must really say that, uh, particularly on the energy transition, I'm now 10 years a professor in Aalborg University and, and really proud of that. But if I learn one thing is that the Danes, they can be free, they can be old hippies, but they know how to plan things on a local level, on the middle level, and on the government level. And we can learn a lot from them in adopting these models, whatever step we make, for instance, in regional energy strategies, etc. So I'm really happy with that contribution. Again, it's something we didn't have in our project. So uh, you, I'm really happy that they, that they point at these more or less failures, or let's say that we can enrich our approach with that. It's the same with what New Energy Coalition is doing. I wished that New Energy Coalition would be more part of the Frisian Islands, uh, even more than only Ameland, and also of the whole Frisian uh, region. Then, in the inputs, uh, Simon, if we are honest, the SDGs and facilitating the SDGs and sustainability are somewhere in one of our uh, branches of the wheel, and then midway the project, we realized ourselves that the SDGs and sustainability and the digitization of methods have to be at the start of the project. So now 
we see that uh, at the start of the project, like the mission orientation, but uh, we didn't see that in the beginning. So we would do it completely different now if we would start over again. So that thanks to Janine, who is uh, bringing these ideas, and also Bonnie, that we realized it uh, ourselves. And then, uh, finally, but I, <laughs> I forgot my glasses. Uh, no, I think I got everybody here. No, Linda. Um, well, it's nice to have dance floors, but we need power on the dance floor, and we need sustainable entrepreneurs and new ventures there. And it's, of course, fantastic what you are achieving, and we are, I must say, profiting a lot from that. Uh, I think all the islands here have taken over your ideas from InnoFest, not only to InnoQuarter, but also to, to this uh, uh, project. So that's all uh, uh, wonderful. And uh, Jan, what we have done is we had hoped to uh, give you all a nice booklet of all presentations of today and of the posters that you see there on, on the wall, because these posters, they represent the contributions, the latest contributions of all islands. Uh, however, we, we needed so much time and effort to organize this due to, to COVID um, that uh, we could not finish in time, but we have one wonderful booklet, Jan, and I think you will present that now to, to yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where you have it. I have it all. To Simon. Okay, wonderful. Okay, Simon. The only one until now, but everybody is getting one of them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Okay. Working with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I had an easy job because. Everybody was better than I was. I just have to look at the schedule and we're very good on time. So I want to thank you very much. And Simon said in his words, I'm proud and I'm also proud to hear these young people this afternoon. That's why I don't really retire and just going on with little things. I think, Simon, we, uh, we have the same, the same uh, way of thinking about that. So we see each other uh, very many times uh, the next year. I want to thank you. Uh, speakers very, very much. I have, for all of you, a present uh, in the back of the room, so I gave it to you there. That's uh, much easier. I'm give him a big hand, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, can, I can't mention names, but I want also thank the people from the province of Friesland for the organization of this whole day. Dennis and all the people around him, Bizit, uh, Stop calling names because Albert, of course, uh, I want to thank the people of the sound. I want to thank the people of the catering. Uh, thank you very much for all. It was a very nice, a very good and inspiring afternoon. Uh, I hope you will stay here for the after party because the dancing floor, we mention it so often. Nobody can leave without uh, being on the dancing floor. So see you after this and have a nice Albert. What do you say? No, no, interrupt me, Albert. What is it? I have one announcement for the partners of Island Facilitation. I would like to make a picture of them uh, together. Uh, so that's what I want to say. A picture? Okay, a picture. Okay. Okay. And we meet each other next year at the Azores. Okay. Thank you very much. See you at the after party.